What's up my YouTube family, Sergeant Greybeard with another Division 2 video. Today is Friday, February 26th, and as always, I hope this message finds you healthy and safe. In today's video, my friends, I'm going to be showing you one of my favorite skill builds to run within the game. And I mean, this is something that I'll use in solo play or group, and it happens to be really effective regardless of the difficulty. Now, if you happen to be new to the channel, first of all, welcome. Secondly, feel free to hit that subscribe button. We would love for you to be a part of our gaming family. And if you enjoyed this or found it helpful at all, take a quick second and hit that like button. It really helps us out. Finally, as most of you know, we have giveaways here, and our current one is for an Xbox Series X. However, more importantly, we will also be making a donation in the winner's name to St. Jude Children's Hospital for $500. The winner will be announced on April 4th of this year to celebrate the one-year anniversary at the channel, and all you need to do to enter is either subscribe here or follow us on Twitter. Either way is fine. As always, my friends, please keep in mind that watching our content is not a requirement to win. Only watch the things here you may enjoy. That's why you have the option of entering via Twitter. Having said that, let's get into today's video. So as I do with every build video that I make, I want to remind you at the beginning, this is just a template. This is how I like running the thing. You may want to do it differently with different skills. It's up to you. The most important thing with any build is really making it your own. Now, as you can see by the footage, I'm in the summit on legendary difficulty facing two rogue agents. I have no problem taking them out with this thing. Now, in full transparency, it's not fully maximized in regards to legendary difficulty as yet, but it still gets the job done. There are definitely a few pieces which I want to improve, which means a little bit more farming. However, when it comes to heroic difficulty in this build, it just shreds NPCs. Like, it's not even close. I love this thing on heroic. This is what I use for farming control points, and it just rips through them, no problem. As always, my friends, I'm starting this off by showing you a little bit of footage, then we're going to cut to the build itself, then a little more footage at the end, and at that point, we'll also go over a few tips that I like to give new players when they're trying out a build for the first time. Now moving on to the build itself, my friends, as always, we are going to start off with a specialization. I happen to be running Technician with this for a few reasons. First of all, it gives you an extra skill tier, but it also gives you 12% extra damage to drones, skill proxies, and robotics. One quick reminder, and this is for people who are new to the game or just returning, regardless of what specialization you pick, make sure the proper weapon is activated in the skill tree so you do get that 15% extra damage bonus. Starting off with a primary weapon, my friends, I'm running with a capacitor, and this is definitely one of the most effective ARs to run in the game right now, especially when it comes to skill builds. You can see here this weapon has the talent capacitance where shooting enemies build stacks to a cap of 40. Each stack grants 1.5% skill damage. After 5 seconds, stacks decay 1 per second. Not only that, but you also gain an extra 7.5% weapon damage for each skill tier that you have. So you can see here I'm at skill tier 6, therefore I'm getting 45% extra weapon damage right out of the gate. For my secondary weapon, I have the named rifle, the Harmony, which has perfectly in sync, where hitting an enemy grants 20% skill damage for 5 seconds, using a skill or damaging enemy with a skill grants 20% weapon damage for 5 seconds. Finally, damage increases are doubled while both buffs are active at the same time, and pretty much with this build, I'm just swapping from my primary to my secondary. I don't really use the handgun that much, and again, this thing puts out a ton of damage. Moving on to the gear itself, my friends, you can see I'm running one piece of Wyvern, three Empress International, one Hannah Yu, and the exotic Waveform holster. Starting off with the mask, it is the one piece of Wyvern, so we get that 10% skill damage bonus, and pretty much with all of these pieces, I'm trying to stack skill haste and skill damage. And actually, at the end of the video, I'll go into a few other options that you have or different things that I'm looking for. But now moving on to the Empress International gear set, you can see I'm running three pieces so I get that skill health, skill damage, and skill efficiency bonus. For the talent, I've chosen Kinetic Momentum. When in combat, each skill generates a stack while active or not on cooldown. Stacks increase your total skill damage by 1% and total skill repair by 2%, up to 15 stacks per skill. Moving on to the holster, my friends, it is the exotic waveform. Now, right now, this is not in the general loot pool. You have one of two ways to actually get it. You can either complete the season or get up to level 90 in the season and get it that way, or another agent could drop it for you if they happen to find an extra one. 
My recommendation is this. If you do not have the waveform, I suggest putting in a second piece of Hannah U because that is going to give you an extra 10% skill damage with a two-piece bonus, and it can still be extremely effective. Next, we have the knee pads, which is the second piece of the Empress International gear set. And moving on to the gloves, we have one piece of Hannah U, so we do get that 10% skill haste bonus. Last but not least, my friends, we have the backpack. It is the third piece of the Empress International gear set. I've chosen the Talon Combined Arms, where shooting an enemy increases total skill damage by 25% for 3 seconds. And in my opinion, it is definitely one of the most effective talents to have in a backpack because the reality is with this build, you are constantly shooting NPCs. So you're pretty much always getting that extra damage bonus. Now, in regards to the actual skills themselves, I've chosen to run with the Assault Drone and the Assault Turret because for me, I'm the most proficient with those two. However, as I mentioned earlier, the most important thing about any build is really designing it towards your gameplay. I happen to know a lot of different gamers that like running with the Stinger Hive, and they, you know, they prefer the Artillery Turret, which obviously means you have to change your specialization because that's only available with the Demolitionist. However, again, take your time, try different things, and really make this thing your own. One thing I'd like to recommend to all of you that may be new or just returning to the game is when you're trying out a new build, I recommend going to a control point or to a mission that you're familiar with. That way you know the timing of the NPCs and you can see how the thing really responds. Having said that, my friends, I'm going to start to wrap this video up. As always, I'd like to take a moment and thank you all for your continued support and remind you, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. Most of you know by now that one of my favorite aspects about making these build videos are the communication that we have as a community here. So please feel free to leave any tips or tricks or ways you run builds. I'd love to hear them down below and definitely will highlight them in future videos as well. Like I said at the beginning of this thing, if you happen to be new here, feel free to hit that subscribe button. We would love for you to be a part of what we're doing. If you enjoyed this, you can hit that like button as well. But most importantly, Take care of yourselves, be kind to each other, and we will talk to you soon. Thanks again, everyone.